number one go to. But I think I wanted before I say absolutely, you know, wait and see how uh, how everybody does, you know, yeah. um, with the tough questions as we as we go through the election. But. Hillary Clinton is doing an interesting number on, on this particular election, and it's something that only uh, someone in Hillary Clinton's position can do, because you have all these ne'er-do-wells that are coming out of the woods going, I think I could be president. Like, I don't even remember that name of that guy, the governor of Vermont, who was like, I think I could be president. And he went <laughs> on Bill O'Reilly the other day, and uh, O'Reilly just destroyed him, not in a not in a, in a horrendous adversarial sort of way. He was like, well, how you know, you're, you're a Democrat. How do you think you're going to? Uh, beat Hillary in the primaries and, and he was just like well I think I'll talk about this thing that she didn't and and O'Reilly was like no no one cares happened in 2002 what else do you got and the guy was like well I really think that he was like no no one cares 2002 <laughs> that's all the and all the race you're gonna run lots of luck dude and um right and it's just like the guy proved himself to be an absolute nobody and I'm not saying that his his platform wasn't a good one or he was right or wrong but if you can't handle Bill O'Reilly what are you gonna do with a shirtless Vladimir Putin beating down your door that's not who we want to be in president you know no. so it's just so it, it's interesting like hillary is in this position where she doesn't people say that she's not running for president she's standing for president meaning she's not out there trying to get her name out everybody knows who she is everyone's familiar with her work and she's basically playing this incredibly shrewd game of letting people come to her and only giving audiences when she damn well pleases to and um she just has a tremendous amount of power and chutzpah going into this election Election. I think she's going to be very, very tough to beat, no matter how you feel about yeah. it. Yeah, um, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see her debate, and and I, I mean, you know, my hope is, is that she does, uh, you know, that, that she will be our new, our next president. Hmm. Uh, Funkhauser. Yeah. One last piece of news, then we got to talk about Amanda's movies. And finally, um, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I just uh, yeah, hold on. Where is it? Yeah. It's over here. Oh. I got it here, and then. Uh, uh, a uh, uh, Viagra is uh -huh. being used to treat malaria. Yeah. So many questions. Uh, Viagra for malaria. Hard to believe. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's. <laughs> ah, I was a thinker. Hey. That was one that makes you laugh in the car on the way home. <laughs> so you have a movie. You, ha you have a movie that you've been working on for the last six years called Painless. Just the last w one year. <laughs> Oh, just the last one year? Why did I get six years? I don't know. Maybe because it takes me six years to get anything done, so I expect that to be the amount of time it takes other people to get done. Uh, yeah. Fancy. Only been working out a year. You already have a movie ready to I'm go. Sure Good job. I'm sure six years from now is when I'll be telling you, yes, I'm, I'm just finishing up the feature of Painless. But, so what is making a film like in this day and age? Go, like, go on. T tell us everything. Give us the elevator speech on your flick and then I, I have some questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's blood, sweat, and tears, man. Because like, uh, like you said, I wrote, uh, wrote it. I directed it. I produced it. I was wardrobe and casting director and locations manager. And I, I basically everything but grip, DP, and makeup uh, I did on my own for this project just to save my, my producing partner's money. Because uh, we also it's self financed, um, uh -huh. you know it's 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 hard work, but it's a labor of love. And there's kind of like what you said earlier about being a writer, which is true for me too. I I don't know how to do anything else as well as I know how to make film, uh, mm. whether it's in front of the camera as an actress or now as I have come to know uh, being behind the camera. Um, it's it's just absolutely it's it's what I need to do. I need to tell stories in a visual format. Wow! And so let me ask you this: the 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 leaps and bounds in which sort of like digital technology has come along, and I only understand sort of like the musical standpoint of it. Like the downside is everybody's stealing music, so it's hard to make a living doing uh, doing it. The upside is on a laptop that I bought four years ago with a program that cost me seventy five dollars, I can make a record that would have cost like five hundred grand in uh, in in nineteen ninety eight to make. Is it the same with filmmaking? Like the the digital technology has enabled you to go make something for what was it like a six thousand dollar film that you, that you made this for i spent six on this but it should have you know that i i did that um i managed to do that by calling in you know i've i've been acting in film for 20 years so uh -huh. i've worked with a lot of people i've made a lot of friends so i managed to be able to do this because of that i have a lot of friends who believed in me and stepped up and i said hey look 
the next time around, I promise I'll pay you, <laughs> you know, what you right. actually deserve. This is what I can offer you, you know, for, for this week while we're shooting. And, right. you know, and I promise to feed you well and make sure you have a bed to sleep and, and I'll give you some whiskey at the end of the night. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so that's one of the ways I managed to save a lot of film and also wearing way too many hats. Uh, but as far as, um, yeah, I think I think that pretty much anybody can go and make a film now, absolutely. And, and there's a lot of great um, source material out there for you to learn. Uh, no Film School Required is a great blog. Uh, I own uh, the entire IFC collection of directors and sat down and watched those uh, at no length before I went into production. But um, for me, uh, I, I have an editor that I use right. who is absolutely brilliant and amazing uh, – because I didn't want this to just to be, oh, look what I can do on my Mac top, you know. Right, yeah. Um, so, and, and she's highly skilled. And you're going right. to see that at the end of the day. That this right. wasn't just something that was, you know, pieced together by me who went, I want to make a movie now. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I think Patton Oswalt spoke at something. It might have been like the opening speech at South by Southwest or something like that. And he was like, we have here in our hands... And he held up his iPhone, and this was a couple of years ago, so it was a couple of generations of iPhone back. He was like, we have in our hands greater filmmaking capability than Orson Welles had back in the day. So the game has changed, and we can all... And I was like, yet people still turn out crap. It just means there's lots and lots of crap out there. So it's cool that you approached it in a manner of like, eh, you know, th this has to be real deal. You can't just throw something up on YouTube, expect to go viral, and wait for the money to roll in. That no. only happened to Jenna Marbles. Yeah. <laughs> so No, not at all. Not at all. I, you know, I, I wanted to involve a lot of craftsmen, a lot of people that have spent time devoting themselves to their particular craft when it comes to filmmaking. So, so your directorial debut, Painless. Um, do we have any sense of when it's possible we might get a chance to see it? Um, it's looking like probably August, September. Uh, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a darker film. It's about um, it's about a gentleman uh, racist. Who, Oh, who is, <laughs> it's about a gentleman who uh, is in recovery from heroin addiction. He loses his wife and daughter in a car accident and then succumbs to a relapse. Wow. Not only do I want to see it, I also want to slip my wrist at the same time. I think it's a runaway hit. Um, hopefully you'll give us a chance to maybe see it before it comes out. That would be great. Amanda, a day day has been a screaming success, and I really, really hope you come back to the show. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'd love to. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs>